This is a video of firsts. My first time riding a canyon. My first video filmed specifically for an Endura partnership. My first time, at least in a long time, riding a size small mountain bike. And finally, my first time visiting a tropical place with enough time to actually do some tropical things. But through all those firsts, one thing remained constant. What I thought I knew turned out to be completely askew. Those expectations made like an iPhone screen beneath a roller coaster absolutely shattered. Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. We're here today to check out the new Canyon Spectral. I would say it's a new bike day, but this thing is very much not a new bike. I've already been riding this thing a bit. Completely stock configuration. I just signed a deal with Shimano, so now I am sponsored by Shimano, so I should swap this thing over to Shimano, put a sticker on it, and more importantly, build the bike up how I would normally ride a bike. The way this thing's set up stock would probably work great for a lot of people, but we've got a big trip planned someplace really special, and I just want to have stuff that I'm familiar with on the bike for that trip. Utilizing a full Shimano drivetrain, Shimano brakes. I'm going to swap over to a dropper seat post with more drop. I'm going to go to a longer stem and set this bike up how I would any of my personal bikes. Everyone say hello to Matt. What up, YouTube? This is Matt Overby. He's been helping me out with a little bit of wrench and work here in the shop. And you just got hired somewhere, right? Yeah, I just got hired at Transition Bikes. So looking forward to working for them in the near future. Congratulations. Thank you. But today you're gonna to help us out with some part swaps here on the Canyon Spectral. Yep. I got to edit the Pivot Switchblade video. So that's the kind of timeline we're working with. But we got a whole bunch of swaps, full XT build. I think it's just all 8,100 XT parts. And then we'll do a quick wheel swap. Yeah, the stock tires are XO plus plastic compound. Oh. Tires are horrible. I gotta run a ton of air so I don't fold over. And there's a harder rubber. We'll recycle the rainbow spoke rippers on the ultimate black bomber yeah. stealth machine. So I hear a lot of spokes pinging. I think this wheel is maybe just not as, maybe not as dialed in as the usual DT 1700. I had these same wheels on the Haro and they felt pretty good on that bike. Oh yeah, and the longer dropper seat post. Yep. That's important. Here's that sweet Silverado. This is 50 millimeters long, and that's like 35 or 40. How did the brake install go? Way better than the shift cable. Really? Housing. Yeah. The housing on the inside of the tube and tube must be just a bit smoother for the hydraulic hose, so it's not as like much friction in it, so it slides right up. <laughs> As I've never actually had interactions with the brand Canyon, this was all a bit unexpected. I got an email from a contact of mine who now works at a PR agency explaining that Canyon was coming to town with a new update of their Spectral trail bike. This sounded like a great opportunity to try something new and to enjoy a free pasta dinner. So I did what any of you would do and attended that fancy pasta feed. So we've got our all new Spectral, which is our trail bike. We've got myself, so I'm Jack. I'm the brand manager for the Gravity Bikes at Canyon. Think of that as kind of this bike up to Downhill. Last month, I told you all about the wintertime Endura kit that I use a ton here back home in the Pacific Northwest. That's a single track fleece and the waterproof spray trouser pants and some warm gloves. I love that stuff, but for this trip to some tropical trails, well, that wasn't the right gear. Luckily, Endura has a bunch of warm weather gear that I had never tried until this trip, and oh my goodness, it works awesome. For shorts, we use the single track light shorts, and these things were super comfortable, quite bomber. They have an easily adjustable Velcro waistband, as well as three zippered shut pockets. Kept everything safe and secure, quite comfortable. These things worked awesome. For a jersey, I was rocking the Endura single track short sleeve jersey. This thing was killer. It's quite durable material, but it still wicked very well, so I never got too sweaty or anything, and it feels like it's gonna last a really long time. I've got both the single track short sleeve jersey and the single track light short linked to down in the description below over to Jensen USA. Anything you purchase from those links down in the description below, whether it's an awesome Endura single track kit or some chain lube or something bigger like a whole mountain bike, well, that'll help support my YouTube channel. That's a big part of how we make these videos happen. Big thanks to Endura for sponsoring this video. Thanks to all of you for trying Endura stuff and letting me know how it is down in the comments. All right, let's get back to the ride report. So I'm on the media ride here with Canyon. The whole crew, 
mountain bike magazines and canyon crew. It's definitely a trip riding my like regular weekly trails with all these folks in from around the world. Back to the bike, right. After a week of Christmas travel, then a week of single digit temperatures, then another week with a foot of snow, I hadn't ridden a bicycle in ages. A chance to thrash on someone else's bike on a rainy winter day sure sounded like a good way to get back into the saddle. Let's get the formal details out of the way. This bike is a 140 rear, 150 millimeter front travel trail bike, available as a 29er here in the USA. This Spectral replaces the prior variants and moving forward, this is the only Spectral, no more Spectral 125. If you'd like to try the modern day penny farthing, the bike does have a mullet adjustment on the chainstay. Canyon told me this new Spectral is quite a bit more torsionally stiff than their prior models. Oh, cool. They you. achieved this through a new linkage design and a better carbon layup in the rear end. We'll discuss how that all compares to other bikes in a little bit. The Spectral is what Canyon refers to as category four strength. This means it's technically okay to race at local enduro events, even with a 160 mil fork. My hyperactive riding should certainly be within mm. its design intent. I forgot which way was zooming in and <laughs> I just did it again. I just reversed those as I said it. Let's talk accessories. That's a big talking point here. The bike fits a 600 milliliter water bottle, which comes as standard equipment with the bike. For those of us in the free world, it does fit our standard 22 ounce specialized bottles. The stock bottle cage is a very tight fit. It's not an intuitive design. Canyon is working on an 850 milliliter Fidlock custom bottle for this bike, though it wasn't ready as I prepared the video. Speaking of standard equipment, the bike has a cubby hole in the down tube where Canyon has stashed a stuff sack. Within that, you'll find not camping gear, but an inner tube, a CO2 adapter, and some tire levers. The latching mechanism feels flimsy compared to Santa Cruz and Specialized, but definitely better than Orbea's. The bike includes a small multi-tool under the top tube, which actually works pretty well. It feels like a Lazion tool, and it makes me wonder if they worked with Lazion in developing this particular tool. All right, let's grab our Canyon, probably Canyon by Lazion. I do wish they would have used the Lazion bottle cage, but we just covered that earlier. Both the Specialized SWAT door and the Santa Cruz storage cover are much easier to use, though to be quite frank, I almost never use this feature of a cubby hole in the down tube, and I find it to be a bit gimmicky. To me, a lot of this accessory stuff kind of seems like a gimmick. I prefer to leave this to the aftermarket who specialize in this rather than the bike brand itself. Would you rather your Raptor have suspension dampeners designed by Ford or by Fox? Canyon is quite proud of the two-piece mud flap providing rear fender duties. I'll admit this thing is pretty sick. The bike has a standard headset, though it did loosen up and start shifting on me a little bit. The bike uses internal cable routing, which is more well done than a $6 stake, which is sufficient, but not quite perfect. How's the cable routing going? Not the most fun I've had. <laughs> <laughs> it's tube and tube, but there's a weird kink in the bottom bracket here. So trying to get it past that is proven to be quite the challenge. We'll see if brute force method doesn't work on this one. I also had a bit of a creaking in the rear suspension that kind of onset within about 10 or so rides, but not the end of the world. The Spectral includes a silly steering stabilizer known as the KIS system, which has been modified since its first implementation. Canyon staff explained that no one rode it in its highest setting, so they reduced the overall spring tension. The entire system is removable, and we can talk more about that later. We just got here and had an amazing first ride. We were expecting things to be horribly muddy and completely unrideable, so we like tiptoed our way out into the forest and we lucked into just a few puddles on the side of the trail. This puddle brought to you by Crayola, exuberant orange. But of course our descent was very challenging to ride because it was so slippery in between the rocks. You'll never be able to see on camera, but it's like going down ice. The stuff is just so slippery. <laughs> These tight switchbacks are indeed tricky. Oh my goodness. I'm glad I had this bike, but the amount of moisture on the trail with the clay, it was so incredibly slippery that riding was at like three tenths pace on the downhill, which is fine. It's about the adventure and it was a beautiful adventure, someplace totally new. I particularly liked this bike for the trail we were on because it was really slow speed, kind of steep, but just very rocky. A lot of putting the bike exactly where you need to set it. Because this bike is relatively short, it was easy to fit it into these weird spots. But 
with that pretty slack front end, it never felt nervous when it got steep and when you needed to cruise over some like stair steps of rock. Oh, I didn't film it. I caught a shift with my knee on the oh, no. shifter. On the, I've never done that before. <laughs> Let's talk sizing. I had some concerns here. Since 2018, every bike I've had on this channel has been a size medium. I'm five foot eight inches tall, so slightly shorter than the five foot nine inches that is the average American man. In science units, I'm 174 centimeters tall. I'm able to ride and enjoy Pivot's newly enlarged size medium, which uses a reach of 470 millimeters. But I really don't want anything longer on a bike with this amount of travel. The medium spectral has a 475 reach. Therefore, Canyon was suggesting that I ride what they consider to be a size small. They do also offer an extra small, but that is way, way, way tiny. The size small spectral uses a short reach of 450 millimeters, and this will be the shortest bike I've ridden in some time, but still longer than bikes were a good 10 years ago. And this is only five millimeters shorter than the one that got away, that Rocky Mountain altitude. Now, that 450 millimeter reach pairs really well with a 64 degree head angle and super short sub 430 mil chainstays, and that all sprouts a 1213 millimeter wheelbase. On the shorter side, kind of, but not crazy short, doing no small part to that nice 64 degree head angle. I did struggle with the stock tiny little 40 mil stem, and I had multiple instances of shifting the bike with my knee pad while seated and pedaling. Yes, I do wear knee pads, but I've literally never had this happen on any other bike. This is likely because the bike has a modern steep seat angle, shifting the rider position a bit forward. Older bikes had slacker seat angles, moving the rider quite a bit more rearward. I do feel quite over the rear wheel on this bike, but it's not an extreme thing and I actually kind of like the way it all feels. Now the real question, how does it ride? Well, I really am enjoying this thing. The overall feel of the bike is capital F-U-N, fun. Being so short, the bike loves to carve tight little corners. It also loves to get airborne and it feels awesome popping off both small roots, rocks, and actual jumps. It does what Buffy would do and absolutely slays a man-made jump. The short reach is a big player here as shorter bikes are indeed more playful. The tiny chainstay also helps quite a bit with this fun feeling. Speaking of short chainstays, the bike actually felt really nicely balanced. Short out back, kind of short in front too, and that proper slack head angle just kept it all predictable. This is kind of similar to that Santa Cruz Bronson, though definitely a tad bit smaller. The suspension on the Spectral feels good, but nothing particularly groundbreaking. I will say that for me and my riding style, I did not have any issues with bottoming this thing too much, which is really nice. The progression of the rear end felt awesome. The Spectral is happiest on lower angle trails, that is trails that aren't crazy steep. This is what I most prefer to ride, likely part of why I've been enjoying this bike so darn much. As I push the bike forward with my legs in order to get a manual going, the chainstay length and suspension, they all pair really well together to get the bike into the balance point really easily and predictably. At speed, the Spectral does just fine. Maybe not quite as predictable and balanced as something slightly bigger like that Santa Cruz Bronson, but definitely well. I do prefer the dual 29 inch rear wheels of the Spectral, something I wish that Santa Cruz Bronson did allow. The Spectral's horse link is also not as forgiving for the square edge hits as any of the dual link designs I've ridden recently. This includes DW link, VPP, or even Niner's system. Overall, I think mountain bikers get way too caught up in suspension designs and the bike's geometry will always matter more, especially on a short travel bike like this here. And Canyon hit the geometry nail really well on this bike. Kudos to whoever is swinging that hammer. While it's easily removable, I don't think the KIS setup is at all necessary and it creates far more hassle than it helps with the bike. When I clicked the tabletop on the first ride, I felt the system lock for a moment as it slipped on the steerer tube. Whenever I pull the bike up and flip it around on the trail to change direction, well, it also slips then. This means it'll then pull the front wheel off center. While I do think geometry trumps suspension, I do wish Canyon canceled their whole KIS development and just put that extra development money towards a dual link suspension system. Over the years, Canyon's had some pretty unique ideas and things to add to their bikes between the shape shifter doohickey on the rear shock and this new KIS system of springs that holds your steer tube. If I understand correctly, the idea is the springs will self-center your handlebars. Um, here's an example. To get an idea how much this system actually does or does not do, let's ride the same section of trail three different times, once with the system at maximum, in the middle of the road, and at minimum.
Let's slide it down to the tightest. To remove this system, I need to pull the fork. So that's not going to happen trail side. KIS system at maximum spring tension. It feels a little more nervous than what was going on earlier. I feel out of control. I want to steer, and the bike wants to steer against me. Yeah, skeptical guy here. So in the more fun bits of trail where it's like tighter, steeper, you're manipulating the bike more, I didn't notice a ton, but in the easier bits of trail where it's more high speed and less traction and the bike's just gonna have to drift and float a little, it was actively making me do things. It didn't make me do anything I didn't wanna do, but it was disconcerting. I had less confidence than I would have without any kind of stuff going on. Maybe a week or two, I get used to it. Did I see a huge benefit from the first run with it? More the opposite. Let's try it though, in the lowest tension and see how that feels. Maybe it'll be way harder than the last run and find out. This thing doesn't look straight. You guys see that? It's off, it's twisted. Yep, and that's softest. Okay. We still got our self-centering? Yeah, we do still self-center. Less so. Oh, that feels better. This feels way better. <laughs> Holy cow. The KAS system, sum this all up. I don't think it's necessary. I think it adds complexity and cost and doesn't really provide a lot of benefit other than it's something to talk about when they're selling this bike on the internet. Canyon is obviously a genius at selling bikes on the internet, so no disrespect to them. They know what they're doing, but uh, I feel like they could hit a better price point if they just deleted that entire system. Canyon is a price-focused brand, and they are not available at any stores, just on their website. To add a gimmick like KAS does really no one any solid favors. It's a shame, because I'm going to come off as overly negative, but this system is my least favorite thing about the bike. The suspension design is actually decent, definitely better than the Specialized Stump Jumper even. But it could definitely be even better. Between the KAS system, the included tool, bottle, cage, cubby hole, toolkit, all that, I can tell Canyon's going after the freaks in the spreadsheets. I'm certainly not the target customer, but I'll share my opinion anyhow, so just bear with me. Before we're done, I only have about a month in this bike, so I really can't pontificate about its long-term durability. It does have a squeak in the suspension, but I've got to give the bike back, so I'm not going to try to figure out what's causing it. Perhaps you have ridden other Canyon bikes, and if so, maybe you can leave a comment down below describing the durability and the service experiences. With some concluding thoughts, I really enjoyed riding the Spectral. It hits a forgotten travel segment perfectly, and it's a downright well-engineered bike. I felt comfortable on it quickly, and it absolutely shattered my expectations. This would be an awesome starter bike, or an excellent complement to a longer travel enduro or downhill bike. Living where I do, I kinda like bikes to be a tad bigger if I was gonna have only one, but for two bikes, this would definitely complement those even bigger bikes really nicely. For a lot of parts in the USA, this would be a fantastic single bike as well. Now, if Canyon were to make this thing about 5 or 10 mils longer in the reach, that would fit me perfectly, but unfortunately their new sizing mantra has me slightly between sizes between the small and the medium. That's just a 5 foot 8 problem, more than anything else. If this was someone's <laughs> first nice mountain bike, they would be absolutely making a great choice. I came away quite impressed with this bike. It sure would be fun to try that hardtail they've got going, but that's a whole different conversation. Big thanks to Endura for sponsoring this video. Big thanks to Canyon for loaning me this bike. I've had a lot of fun on this thing. It's a really good bike. Let me know in the comments if you have any experience with Canyon bikes yourselves. Maybe you can give the other viewers of this channel some feedback on the durability and how it is with service and all those other things that I don't have the experience to comment on properly. Thanks again, everyone. I'll see you down in the comments. Peace and wheelies.